Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. We have been looking at the derivation of the Schwab zelda which formulation leading up to formation of these coupling terms of a linear operator working on both the energy and the continuity. So the, the steps that we have followed so far is to have the overall continuity taken into account in the simplified energy equation where we are having um, the, the, the relevant terms based on the assumptions that we have made and then we add uh, this term which is having a essentially amounting to 0 to the uh, energy equation so that we can now group uh, these two terms together and we now have a V plus VK. So this is actually amounting to the species velocity so this is sort of like saying re recall this is actually the mixture averaged convection of enthalpy of the mixture averaged enthalpy this is actually the um, en uh, enthalpy convection due to diffusion. So if you now try to put these two together this would actually be like the, the species velocity convecting the species enthalpy right. So effectively we are having like a species specific convection of enthalpy grouping together that is actually happening at the uh, from the uh, across the surface of a control volume this is conduction happening across the surface of a control volume uh, so obviously we are having like a divergence of both equal to 0 because when you now have surface uh, effects the, the Gauss's divergence theorem shows up this divergence here. So you can clearly see the, the, the physics of the manipulation also that is going on but here what we then do is well if you now have something like a species specific enthalpy convection can I now use the species specific mass consumption a mass uh, uh, convection right. Uh, that is equal to the so, so since the if you now look at this as like a species velocity uh, small v k vector then the diffusion is embedded in it. So we do not have to worry about diffusion explicitly so then it would be like species convection equal to uh, uh, reaction okay the, or the, the production or uh, sh should have actually had a um, w k here. Um, right. So of course you do not have the unsteady term because you assume steady state so whatever is convecting in and out should be based on how much is being produced uh, or consumed inside the control volume that is how uh, the species conservation looks like which is now possible for us to plug this into this okay and then we do the uh, expansion of the enthalpy the species enthalpy and say this is like standard heat of formation plus the sensible enthalpy. You now plug that in there and what you will find is uh, for example for the, that term with the uh, uh, standard heat of formation alone you now try to use this use this use this equal to wk if you did that then you would get this to be taken to the right hand side with a negative sign and for the remaining you now keep it as it is but then notice that this is going to be mixed and averaged anyway therefore you could go ahead and um, sum, sum over all CP case and uh, then you get like a CP right. So here CP is equal to sigma equals 1 to n uh, yk CPK right. So that is what being is being used over here but you cannot do that here because you have a capital VK that is weighting it so you have to have a YK VK CPK within this integral so you cannot get this YK alone here and then have the summation that VK is interfering there and then we had the K gradient T coming from here as it is and I told you how we got this right hand side. Now what I would like to point out uh, which, which, I, which I did also previously is this is the chemical heat release rate term that has now been identified explicitly for you. What I would like to uh, think well, what we should like to think about is so how, how does this really work delta H of K naught actually means the 
the standard heat of formation of uh, species K right. So that is going to be in terms of something like uh, joules per kg or, or, or joules per kilogram of species K and WK is actually the net rate of production or consumption of species K in terms of something like kilogram per meter cube per second right. And if you now add up this product over uh, all of all of uh, the species you are now going to get the net heat release that is being produced uh, out of this chemical reaction. There is an alternative way of doing this. So this is actually per species right so you now take heat release per species and then add up across species. Of course in the in the Schwab Zeldovich formulation the uh, uh, I think I guess the ninth assumption is assuming a single step chemical reaction. But what if you had multi step chemical reactions right. So we know that for a chemical reaction which is not necessarily a formation reaction right? any chemical reaction you will have a heat of reaction let us say standard heat of reaction. So if you now had a standard heat of reaction uh, for one reaction but you now are looking, looking at a, like a multi step reaction scheme each of these reactions having a standard heat of reaction associated with it which could be. Uh, in endothermic or exothermic right. So if you now have all these reactions happen and each of these reactions has a reaction rate associated with it right which is not specific to any particular species that is participating in the chemical reaction in, in, in those reactions. So on the one hand you have a heat of reaction on the other hand you have a reaction rate. So from there you should be able to find out what is the rate at which heat is released in a particular reaction. And then you can now look at all the reactions together and find out what is the heat release the net heat that is released per unit time that is the heat release rate per unit time for all the reactions happening. So there you sum over reactions. So one of the uh, exercises that you would like to work out is is it possible for you to show that the heat released from the chemical reactions on the whole is the same regardless of whether you actually. Uh, summed over the species and their heats of formation or summed over the reactions and their reaction rates right. So that is something that we will not really pursue uh, here because we make an assumption about single step chemical reactions okay uh, but, that, but that, that is not going to actually stop us from writing another expression for multi step chemical reactions in terms of reaction rates and uh, heats of reactions as opposed to re, um, heats of formation of species that we are doing here. So where, where are we actually going to use the single step reaction assumption is, is yet to be seen we have not really utilized it yet okay. So that is one thing that I wanted to point out. So while, while we have now dealt with um, the, this term there are three terms that we want to now deal with in the on the left hand side and uh, let me just number them as 1, 2, 3 so that we will actually try to uh, um, work on some of these terms identified by the numbers. So um, so now let us let us first for example take uh, take term three right. So we now take term three that is like K grad T that is that is the simplest looking term in, in all of this. So let us now uh, take this and then here what I am going to do is I am going to write K and then uh, multiply and divide by rho uh, Cp d uh, with a rho d put over there and a Cp put over here and then write the grad T. Hey that looks like a lot of cosmetics that has been done around without any effect but what is what is in here now what do we have so this is our Lewis number right this is our Lewis number that is equal to K over rho Cp d and we have assumed it to be 1 right and uh, therefore so this is assumed therefore this is now nothing but rho d Cp grad t all right. So that is what you are going to get for the uh, third term so effectively what you are basically saying is the conduction is going to happen pretty much based on the diffusivity because the lowest number is equal to 1 yeah okay. Now the second term is a little bit more complicated uh, to deal with so term 
3 all right. So the term 3 is uh, is 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 uh, rho sigma k equals 1 to n y k capital V k uh, vector integral T superscript not to T C P K D T all right now we will have to actually show why what what this amounts to and uh, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to try to show that for you so this is I'm going to show that this is like uh, minus rho d sigma k equals 1 to n uh, grad y k uh, integral t not to t c p k d t this is actually coming from uh, so I will open parentheses here uh, multi component diffusion equation right multi component diffusion equation simply boils down to d gradient x k equals x k sigma j equals 1 to n x j v j vector minus x k v k vector um, k equals 1 to n this is to say in the multi component diffusion equation only the first term on the right hand side survives and all the other terms are uh, uh, the all, all the other terms vanish because of the assumptions that we have made exclusively to get rid of them and uh, we also have made the assumptions that all the binary diffusion coefficients are equal to d so uh, you, you just have to unwrap the left hand side and the right hand side together uh, in, in the multi component diffusion equation uh, to, to get this now you can further uh, uh, so what you can actually do here is now we are not really interested in having x k we, we are interested in having y k that is what we are dealing with right. So one way of actually trying to get rid of this is divide by x k and multiply by y k right so if you do that then what you will find is you have a grad x k by x k right that 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 uh, gives you something like a grad natural logarithm x k right so you get into those kinds of uh, uh, things so what you what, what I would say is uh, multiply I am going to skip steps here multiply uh, by y k by x k and uh, sigma uh, k equals 1 to n right that means you add over uh, you you should you should okay so you, you now get a d gradient natural logarithm x k minus uh, sigma j equals 1 to n y j gradient natural logarithm y j uh, should be x j I guess x j um, equal to minus v k right k equals 1 to n now so you can show this okay so show show as in like you know try to uh, do this and then you can further simplify this if you now try to uh, write it out for all the species you can say further show show uh, vk vector is equal to simply minus d gradient natural logarithm yk k equals 1 to n Uh, this is actually retrieving fixed law 
so the, the, the way we have actually made the assumption that d i j is will be equal to d and also getting rid of all the other terms except the first term on the left hand side of the multi component diffusion equation should essentially amount to being able to retrieve Fick's law for a multi component system right. So if you now say v k is equal to minus d natural log, um, gradient of natural logarithm of y k this amounts to saying gradient y k divided by y k so this y k can actually go over here to the left hand side and then you can now see how this y k v k can be written as minus d gradient y k so you also had a row so the negative sign and the row uh, will go there then sigma k equals 1 to n gradient y k uh, integral t naught to t cpd so you can you can so use this above uh, So that closes this parenthesis. Then let us now consider, but gradient of T naught to T CPDT, right? The reason why we want to do this is we now find that gradient y k shows up here right and then you now have a CP integral CP dt um, let us look at what we have over uh, over there we have a divergence of rho v CP dt right and uh, uh, and I am sorry no 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 not that uh, you see here you now see rho d CP grad t so there the gradient is actually on the temperature and here the gradient is the gradient is on the yk so is it possible for us to see if we can combine these um, so if you now consider this particular term out of the blue to uh, seemingly out of the blue okay we just we just consider this term then gradient um, let, let me. We can we can we can now write this as gradient of sigma k equals one to n uh, y k integral t naught to t c p k d t. Not a problem. Simply writing what c p is uh, starting from here. Okay. It's only c p that needs to be integrated with respect to time temperature not yk so you can pull the yk out of the integral but it has to be within the summation uh, so let us now try to get the gradient inside the summation and see what happens uh, so this is k equals 1 to n um, gradient yk all right integral t naught to t cp k dt plus sigma k equals 1 to n y k gradient integral t naught to t c p k d t right so this is equal to sigma k equals 1 to n gradient y k integral t naught to t c p k d t and then we now have to see what what is going on here t is a variable right so we are looking at actually taking a gradient of temperature this has always been our in our minds all right we always found that temperature is actually the variable sitting on top of this integral so if you want to look at any gradient uh, that, that needs to be taken derivative that needs to be taken with respect to temperature what we, what do we need to do we will have to apply Leibniz rule because Leibniz rule is where you now are looking at derivative of an integral whose um, uh, limits are uh, functions of what you are going to take the differentiation with respect to okay so that is where the problem is and uh, so that is going to yield for us 
uh, plus sigma k equals 1 to n um, y k c p uh, k of t rad t. The way it works is uh, Leibniz rule so this is actually coming out of uh, Leibniz rule. The way it works is you, you evaluate the integrand at the uh, at the limits and then multiply that by the gradient of the limits or, or the differentiation of, or, of the limits. So in this case T0 is a constant so the second term which, which is having a gradient of T0 is going to vanish. So you do not have to worry about evaluating the integrand at T0 so the only term that is going to actually uh, and then of course what you then, then can do is you will also have a. Uh, another term which is like an integral of gradient of CPK okay so that is not going to contribute so what is going to contribute in these three terms from Leibniz rule is only that term where the gradient of T is uh, there with the CP evaluated as the T that is how uh, it goes in fact in my notes I am a little bit more uh, particular about pointing out that you can say this is actually um, this is T prime DT prime. So where we are now saying T prime is like a dummy variable of integration whereas here we are evaluating the temperature that is going to be there as an unknown okay. So uh, if you now uh, are okay with this then what happens is uh, we now get sigma k equals 1 to n gradient y, y k integral T not to T CPK DT plus grant T does not depend on species so that can be pulled out of the summation and all you have is sigma YK CPK which is simply CP right. So this is like CPK CP grant T right so um, what are we trying to do we are now trying to look for this term in here okay so from the third term we got this by applying the multi component diffusion equation reducing to fixed law to get this term right and this term can be identified here as what we started out with minus this okay therefore therefore uh, sigma k equals 1 to n gradient y k integral t0 to t cpk dt let us also do this a little bit uh, better if you want to now look at this as a negative sign uh, with, a, with a negative sign therefore minus rho d right then what happens you, have, you now throw in a minus rho d over here so you now have a minus rho d gradient integral T0 to T CPDT that is here um, and then this goes to the left hand side with a negative sign but you have multiplied by a minus rho d so you get a plus rho d CP grad T right. Good then what happens try to put all these things together right. So we have the first term as it is just keep the first term as it is rho v integral T0 to T CP DT okay the second term has been the one is, is the one that has been giving us a little bit of a problem and that is now looking like effectively two terms okay. So that is minus rho d grad integral T0 to T CP DT plus rho d cp grad t okay the third term is coming with a negative sign k grad t which is also written as rho d cp grad t so if you now have this subtracted from the second term you can clearly see that this gets cancelled with this right away okay 
and this appears with a negative sign along with the first term and of course the last term on the right hand side remains as it is so we now can assemble all these different pieces of the energy equation so therefore the energy equation becomes gradient sorry divergence of rho v vector integral t naught to t cp dt that is exactly the first term we need to borrow only this term for the second term the other one is going to get cancelled with the third term so we have minus rho d gradient integral t naught to t cp dt equal to minus sigma k equals 1 to n whatever we had on the left hand uh, right hand side there we will just copy here so delta h of k not w k all right what is this like so the last 5 minutes 5 10 minutes we have gone through like huh but what have we got finally is it something that we can think about yeah this is the mixture average velocity right this is the sensible enthalpy of the mixture so this basically means this is the convection of the mixture enthalpy all right and this you can clearly see is divergence of gradient of something right with a rho d sticking in there so that is actually the diffusion term it's effectively coming from a combination of species convection of enthalpy and the conduction okay so this is acting like the diffusion term and of course that is a chemical reaction rate term so we now see that there is there are three effects that are now coming together convection of the mixture diffusion and chemical reaction so whatever we talked about right at the beginning of the course okay where we are now talking about a interplay of three processes convection diffusion reaction so after all the shake up that has happened we finally come down to only these three right so that's that that's the physics that's involved in uh, in this uh, in this equation we call this the schwab zeldovich energy equation right so we also want to work with the species equation right so let us get back to how the species equation looks like equation B so equation B is now divergence of rho yk v plus vk equals wk we do not like capital VK we do not want to look, look at capital VK in fact what we decided here was we wanted to throw out capital VK that is how we got this rho d grad, y, grad yk sigma right so that is coming from how the fixed law looks like so we want to be able to now substitute VK is equal to minus d grad yk divided by yk or in other words yk vk is equal to minus d grad uh, grad yk if, uh, if you are able to now substitute it over here right then what happens divergence rho, uh, rho v yk plus oh sorry uh, with, the, with the negative sign minus d grad yk right that is what you are going to get so let us try to write that out species equation B becomes applying uh, the simplified form of uh, multi component diffusion equation right uh, we simply get divergence of rho v yk 
minus rho d gradient y k equals w i this is what we want to call the Schwab Zeldovich species equation right. So here again you can see more clearly this is convection of species this is diffusion of species this is reaction of species right. So in species conservation also we are having convection diffusion reaction three terms. The other interesting thing is this is rho v times something yk in this case and minus rho d grad that that thing which is yk in this case here we have rho v times something which is a little bit more complicated than that integral t0 to t cp dt and minus rho d grad the same thing which is integral t0 to t cp dt and what did we want we wanted our left hand side to look like some sort of an operator that is operating upon a quantity like alpha i or alpha t so we are now beginning to think we are, we are now beginning to see the contours of that both the left hand sides of the Schwab Zeldovich energy and species equations are actually the, on the same operators operating upon two different um, quantities in this case yk uh, the other one is integral t0 to t cp dt right. So we are we are beginning to achieve uh, achieve this goal but what did, what was our original goal our original goal was we wanted to have a operator script L of alpha i is equal to omega and operator script L of alpha t is equal to omega that means we wanted the right hand sides to be the same okay well that is not the case you now have a w w k over here right and you have a you have the w k within a summation over all k how is that how, how do we deal with this so this is actually this is first of all this is n equations k equals 1 to n right that is one equation summing over all w k weighted by the delta h f naught k so how do you deal with this situation so you now try to form you so you you aren't you you aren't quite at the alphas yet. We have identified yk and integral t0 to t cp dt as potential uh, candidates for our alpha k and uh, uh, alpha t, but the right hand sides are not looking good, right? So let's do something here. So for a chemical reaction. of the form sigma i equals uh, we can say you can keep it k k equals 1 to n nu k single prime script m k gives sigma k equals 1 to n nu k double prime script m k that is a single step reaction okay. So you are now beginning to start, start thinking about a single step reaction as opposed to a multi step reaction scheme uh, we may write we may write omega equal to w i divided by cap or, sh or should say w k w k equal to uh, divided by capital w w k nu k double prime minus nu k single prime k equals 1 to n this is how we defined our omega which is the molar rate of reaction okay the fact that we are now bringing in moles is because we are now dividing by the molecular weight capital w k now this can be done obviously only for a single step reaction if you had multi step reaction then you had many 
omegas themselves it isn't possible for you to write a single omega right so a single omega can be written only for a single step chemical reaction that is where we have to bring in the single step chemical reaction assumption and what you are essentially saying is let me now try to look for some something that is common for all W k so that I can just have that alone and pull everything else to the right hand left hand side and keep only the omega on the right hand side. I can easily achieve that with the species conservation equation because I have this definition that relates the W case to the omega the, the, the single chemical reaction uh, rate. So um, <coughs> if you know so what do, what do you do if you now were to divide your equation your, your k species conservation equation by capital W k times nu k double prime minus nu k single prime right the right hand side becomes omega and the left hand side you do not really have a y k in itself you have a y k divided by capital W k times nu k double prime minus nu k single prime right that is your alpha k. So then let alpha k equal to y k divided by w k nu k double prime minus nu k single prime right. Good can you also substitute w k equal to omega times capital w k nu k double prime minus nu k single prime okay can we now substitute that over here if you did that then you are going to get this term is sigma k equals 1 to n delta h of k naught capital w k times nu k double prime minus nu k single prime times omega omega does not have any any subscript k therefore I can pull that out of the summation and keep it as a factor and whatever is there in, in the summation the, 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 the summed up quantity I would now try to divide that throughout if I divided this equation throughout by that summed up quantity leaving only the omega on the right hand side I have only omega on the right hand side and I am going to get omega on the right hand side for here as well. So now I am beginning to look at uh, uh, a alpha t so alpha t is originally we thought our candidate was integral t naught to t cp dt but now it is actually divided by sigma k equals 1 to n delta h of naught k capital W k nu k double prime minus nu k single prime. So what if I use these alphas now in the schwab zeldovich energy and species equations then we can write L of alpha equal to omega right where alpha alpha equal to alpha k um, k equals 1 to n gives species equation I should say SZ species equation and uh, alpha equals alpha t gives SZ um, energy equation. So what is L for us and uh, here L effectively is L of alpha is divergence of rho v vector alpha minus rho d gradient alpha right so that is 
divergence rho v alpha minus rho d gradient alpha equals omega and this is convection this is diffusion this is reaction we have pretty much achieved our goal right all we have to do now is to notice that this is a linear operator so it is possible for us to now subtract one alpha from the other and the right hand side is the same for all these equations therefore you should get a 0 there right. So notice L of alpha is a linear operator okay so the nonlinear chemical source term can can be eliminated in all but one equation by subtracting that equation from all other equations right then we have we have L of alpha 1 equal to omega and L of beta equal to 0. Okay, where beta equal to alpha t minus alpha 1 so let us call this beta t and beta can also be equal to alpha k minus alpha 1 let us call this beta k k equals 2 to n right. So the betas then or what is called as a coupling terms right. So you now have linear homogeneous n minus uh, Wait a minute. This is this is one equation. This is actually again uh, n minus one plus one. Originally, we had n plus one equations, n species equations, and one energy equation, right? And if you now subtract all equations, so one equation from all other equations, and keep this one equation, you should still have n plus one equations but n of those equations is now have now become linear uh, have become homogeneous right it is only one equation that continues to have the inhomogeneity therefore you now have a, a you have now changed your system of equations into n linear homogeneous equations and one linear inhomogeneous equation all right. So that is that is what you achieve by doing the schwab zelovich or adopting the schwab zelovich formulation this is a good point to stop we will start thinking about what to do with the formulation as we proceed.